Okay. Okay. Right. So um, um, let me just share the notes as well. Right. Okay. So we looked at how uh, Paul was saying um, reiterating um, the 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 ill effects of anger. Right. In be angry, um, but to not sin, and don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Meaning, meaning you deal with it. Don't let time just go by because if that is so, you're going to give a foothold for the devil. And uh, and so that's going to be destructive for yourself, right? So so even though you know it, it, it might be a, it might be it might be justified in the sense in feeling that anger because you know something wrong has been done, so some injustice, but uh, you deal with that anger, you know, let it be a righteous response, um, uh, and uh, and so you know you 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 do not sin because of that anger, right? Okay, verse 28, uh, here are some more practical things. Let him who st stole steals no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. So if, you, if your person is stealing, don't steal anymore, but you work and uh, be a blessing to others. You know? Uh, and that lack that you see in someone else may be full, um, may be satisfied because of your labor. And so do that. So <clears throat> do not steal, do not take away, but really add to people's lives, right? Uh, fulfill a need in people's lives rather than taking away from someone. Um, you you actually add to their life, right? So that's what we see in verse 28. And then 29 onwards. Um, 29 and uh, 29 and 30 let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth so um, let no unedifying uh, or uh, corrupt you know something uh, a word that is uh, destructive let it not proceed from your mouth you know you uh, you don't uh, speak such words and the, and the word corrupt there means uh, you know something that is rotten something that is decaying uh, something that is not fit for use, if it's uh, uh, which is in you know which is bad quality, it is worthless, it's rotten, um, something that is not fit for you know consumption, right? Uh, you know if if it's rotten food, you know you will not even bring it, you not even consider it, you just go straight to the garbage can. So um, something like that, let it not be part of you you know you don't speak those words right um those kind of uh, let there be no communication which is like this right so saying verse 29 um let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth now again the understanding is this you have the life of god you are connected to the life of god and you have um, your work walking in righteousness true you know you put on the new man Know, who's created in that is verse 24 you created in true righteousness and holiness now since this is who you have become this is who you are so let you don't walk like the rest of the gentiles now this is again opposite of uh, the rest of the gentiles uh, how they walk so how do you how do you what do you do you know let no corrupt communication let there be no corrupt communication from your side right from your mouth and uh, uh, but rather, let let it be something that is good for necessary edification. So he's saying, um, let it be good, something that is good, something that is edifying, okay? That it may impart grace to the hearer. So every time we you know, speak edifying, when we communicate in an edifying manner, right? When we uh, speak the words of God, when we speak the truth, uh, of God, when we when we speak gracious words, there is an impartation of grace. Right, there is an impartation of grace. So grace, we know, is divine empowering. 
right? So there is a divine empowering that happens to the hearer when we speak edifying words. Right? We know the principle of speaking words, right? We spend the principle of declaring truth. Right? There, there is a change, there is a shift, there is a breaking down, there is a establishing that happens when we speak the truth of God's word, when we declare God's word, right? So here he's saying, let it impart grace. So there is an empowering that happens, uh, empowering uh, of grace that happens, divine empowering that happens um, to the hearer when they receive such words. Right, maybe about themselves, maybe about their circumstance, uh, maybe about you know something else. Let it be something that's edifying, okay. Um, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. So if it's unedifying, if it's something that's uh, destructive, morally corrupt, such a communication, the Holy Spirit is grieved. Right, the Holy Spirit is uh, grieved within us. We and we feel the emotion of the Spirit of God being grieved in our heart, in our spirit. We know it, right? Uh, we, we know it immediately that, okay, I've said something out of line. Um, I've said something out of place. And we're trying to justify it. Oh, maybe, you know, it was okay. It was, but then you know that suddenly you feel that, right? Um, you feel that loss of joy, maybe. You feel that loss of peace. And you know that the Holy Spirit is, you have grieved the heart of God, right? So Holy Spirit is grieved. So saying, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Redemption, sorry. So the Holy Spirit has come and he has made a mark and you are marked by the Spirit. And we see all that in verse uh, chapter 1, right? Chapter 1, um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. It says, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Right? That signet mark, a seal of ownership uh, you, there, there is a mark of ownership, uh, that, you know, in each one of our lives. Right? It's not a physical mark, but it's a spiritual mark, and uh, we've been marked by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and what does it mean? It means that you are a child of God, that you belong to God, that you are a purchased possession. So the mark of ownership is is on is on us, and it is caused by the Holy Spirit. Right? You are sealed with uh, with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay, so here uh, we, again we see the same thing. Uh, you know, you were sealed for the day of redemption. You know, this this seal, this mark of ownership that He has on you is is not just temporary, but it's for the day of redemption when we'll receive glorified bodies, when this salvation is complete. So uh, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, He has actually He has great plans. Uh, and for 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 you, and he has put this seal on you, this mark on you, and it's for the day of redemption, right? It's not for just for today and tomorrow, but it's for the day of redemption. With that in mind, he has come and indwelt, and he's put his seal on you. So, uh, so saying, let all verse thirty one, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor means uh, you know, loud quarrelling, evil speaking. Let it be put away from you, along with malice, right? evil intent. And uh, so now this responsibility, again, is for the believer. This choice the believer has to make, just like how we saw you know, in verse 22, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man. Okay, you put off concerning your former conduct. So it's, again, a responsibility the responsibility of the believer, right? Um, so let everything, these things, bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking, let it be put away from you with all malice, with all evil intentions. Let it be put away. Let it not be part of your life. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Right? So um, saying, you know, you instead of this, you be like this. Right? Be kind, uh, be tender-hearted, be forgiving. Uh, and the standard for forgiving is again very interesting, right? It's challenging and interesting. It says, even as God in Christ forgave you. Okay, so so that's the model or that's the design 
um, of forgiveness. Right? So which means that we need the Holy Spirit. We need the empowering of the Holy Spirit, the grace of God to be able to forgive like how he did. Okay, or how he forgives. Um, so, but it is possible because it's an instruction here, because it's something that is an expectation, it's it's a command. It is possible because God will not require us to do something. Even with this empowering, he will not require us to do something that is not possible. That is not, you know, that is impossible. If something is impossible, something can, cannot be done. He will not require of it from us, you know, because if he wants us to do something and, and live in a certain way, that means it is possible, right? So, so this is what he says, you know, even as God in Christ forgave you, that's the standard by which you must forgive, okay? Okay, that uh, brings us to the end of chapter five, chapter four. Sorry. Um, so, any questions or anything that you uh, want to share here? Anything that you noticed? Anything that uh, that you really, you know, some, something that really spoke to you? Maybe you can share that um, in chapter four. What is it that really caught your attention? What is it that really, uh, you know, something that was highlighted for you? Something that you learned newly or something that was, you know, that you said, okay, this is something that reiterated anything. You can put it on the chat. You can uh, share as well. Um, Sid, what do you think? Anything that from chapter four from what we read now? now um, okay. uh, I, I just wanted to know, know from each of you guys right so Sid Thomas Dave Prince and kind of, Looking at chapter four, what is it that really uh, caught your attention? Uh, this okay. word I want to say, choice. That choice is choice. Where, uh, yeah, everything God has provided for us, mm. but we need to uh, take some choice that we need to push on that, that choice, the whatever we do only glory for God. So we need to remember that uh, this choice must be towards to God so that we can live our life holy. This choice is meant uh, very important. Right. Yeah. So he, yeah, uh, that's very good, the Prince. Yeah. So because he has given us everything, he has made us, he has given us and uh, the very life of God himself, you know, the life that flows in God. Uh, we are partakers of that. You know, that's an awesome privilege. And it's for a reason that we might live for righteousness. Right? And we have, even as new creation, as, as uh, you know, we've been created in true righteousness and holiness. So, uh, and but that's one side of it. The other side is, of course, we need to live. We need to make decisions. It can be, you know, moment by moment or when we come to certain you know, certain things that happen in our lives, we we need to make those important decisions to live for righteousness. And that that ability is with us. That ability, you know, God has given us, but we need to, uh, we need to take it. Right? So that's so important. We need to remember that, yeah. Anything else? Kanan? Um, anything else that you um, that caught your attention so far, Dave? Anything you want to share? Um, I 
anything at all um, Um, you can even put it in the chat. What did you notice? What did you, you know, what was highlighted for you in chapter four? Um, um, see, um, about the uh, fivefold ministry. Right. the the very plan of God, uh, God's plan to call some into this fivefold ministry and to place them in the body of Christ. You know, it's uh, it's really amazing, right? You see that uh, the plan of God just uh, oh that that He would call, He would empower, He would uh, grace them with certain gifts uh, and. When they steward it well, when they live it well, right, it will be, it will cause edification for the body, right? So that's um, and that's an amazing truth that if they steward it well by the power of God, that it's going to be a blessing. It's going to cause increase. It's going to cause edification. Um, the other thing that we see also is that um, you know, for us as ministers of God. Those of us who are called, you know, this should be something that we keep in mind, right? That we are, yes, we are called to, to preach, to share the gospel. Yes, we are called to teach and, uh, you know, um, and preach sermons maybe uh, as part of that and uh, and live a, a, you know, a life that is an example to them. All that is, all those are small things. Uh, but when, it, when, it, when you connect it all together and you see that, yes, the purpose for that is, is this, right? that um, that every believer would also be equipped to serve in the same manner. The saints, the equipping of the saints, the consecrated ones would be equipped to minister. So when we look at our church and we see that, okay, everyone there is called for ministry, right? It may not be a, a quote-unquote full-time ministry. It may not be a pulpit kind of a ministry, but everyone is called to serve uh, Christ. Everyone is called to live their life for the sake of the kingdom of God. Now, it might be very, very different. It might look very different for each person. You know, they might be doctors, they might be engineers, um, they might be business people, they might be teachers, uh, they might be homemakers, but the thing is that each person is called to be a minister. Now, if that vision or that truth needs to be imprinted or communicated, shared, uh, and ingrained in people's hearts, right? So every believer, you know, if they come and if they come to church and, and you know, when they when they receive that revelation from the Holy Spirit, yes, I'm called to be a minister, right? I'm wherever I am, whatever I am, I might be a student, but I'm called to minister, I'm called to serve. So um, to, you know, to engage with God, to ask God, God, what is it? In what way can I be a, uh, you know, can I be a servant? Uh, in what way can I minister? So, so it's a very enriching life. You know, it's just people are not just coming to attend, right? Attend some meeting, uh, you know, they you might be having some, like some um, some home group, some some small group meeting. So people are not coming just to attend uh, a meeting and go back, but they are coming to be equipped. Right? They're coming to be edified um, and and to go and serve. Right? So that changes the whole perspective of uh, of church. That changes the whole perspective of why I'm part of a church, right? And that changes the perspective of a of the pastor as well, you know, why am I leading this church, right? Uh, and so, you know, why am I teaching these things to the people? So the whole thing changes, right? 
Okay, so Dev is uh, saying, okay, living in the new man is ultimately to live a life of maturity, uh, which is to come to the fullness of Christ likeness. Yes. Um, so that is what we see that um, to the perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, verse 13. Right? So to come to that place of maturity, to come to that stature of Christ. So we we know that there is more, right? We know that there is always more. You know, uh, as a believer, we've we've come so far. You know, looking back, our life has changed. Our you know, our knowledge of God has changed, and uh, our experience and encounter with God is you know has has grown over the years, maybe. Um, but there is more, right? To come to the place of Christ likeness, um, Christ likeness. Which means, you know, compassion, love, forgiveness, and everything. You know, the, the nature of Christ, the character of Christ, be seen in us. Right, the power uh, of uh, with which He ministered to be seen in us, the love with which He ministered to be seen in us. Uh, that is the character, right? Christ likeness in, in all aspects, the power aspect and the character aspect, both put together. That that we will come to that place of Christ likeness. Okay, so let's move on to chapter five, right? Chapter five, um, let me just share the notes. Okay. okay let me, let's just read the first seven verses, chapter five. Uh, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given, has a, and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, or co nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Okay, um, So he says, uh, starting by saying, be imitators of God. So who's an imitator? Imitator is one who mimics, right? Who uh, who does what the other person does. I mean, you know, that that that, that person is an imitator. You know, saying uh, he's doing just like it. You know, and uh, uh, children sometimes you know do that. You know, they imitate, imitate parents, talk like them, uh, or to irritate one another. They do whatever the other person is doing. Now, that person put their hand on the head. The, the other one also puts the hand. Just to say, you know, they're, they're saying something. This one also says the same thing. Um, so that is being a, that is being a mimic, right? Imitating. So Paul is saying, be imitators of God. You know, the way He is. What we saw, uh, we, we we see that Christ is um, the expression of God. In bodily form, right? Uh, that's what Colossians 1 uh, 15, he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. So, what you see in him, what you uh, learned about him, you know, you imitate as the children, as his dear children, you imitate God. Okay. And then uh, he says, uh, you know, we, we have so many, uh, we've received so many things. We are actually, you know, Second Peter first, uh, Second Peter chapter one and verse three talks about how we are partakers, or we have fellowship with the divine nature. We have become partakers. Right? Now, this is what you know the whole New Age teaching twists and says: Okay, you are God. No, that is not true. God is God. He is apart from us. He has created us. He is creator. And we are not divine. We are finite. He's infinite. But in Christ, he has brought us to a place where we can be partakers of this divine nature, where we can receive this God kind of life. Uh, and so, which 
this enables us to be an imitator of God, to walk just like he did, to live just like he did. So, which is a great privilege, right? Because we are finite beings, but we can walk like, like him because, and because he's called us to um, uh, imitate him, right? In all aspects, right? So we have the Zoe kind, God kind of life. We are created in the image of God and we can walk in righteousness and true uh, holiness. And uh, there are some things that we need to do. We need to renew our mind. We need to make godly choices and we need to you know, put to death the works of the flesh, right? So these are things that is required of us, right? And uh, yeah, the important thing is that God would, he would never require us to do something that we are not capable of doing. He would not say, okay, you go climb this mountain. If we if we knew that we we would not be able to climb the mountain, there's no, you know, why should he even say that? Right? He would not say, okay, go lay hands on the sick and they will require. If if he if he knew that we, we cannot do that, then why would he do that? Why would he say that? Why would he ask us to do that? Right. So the thing is that whatever he has asked us to do, uh, he knows that because of his power in us and through us, we are well able to. Be like that. We are well able to be imitators of God. Okay. Verse 2, walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. So the kind of love that he walked in, the kind of forgiveness that he walked in, um, you know, he, that he lived, uh, that, those are examples for us to live. Okay. So he's saying uh, very clearly, walk in love. Okay, walk in this uh, agape, this God kind of love. Okay, um, let me just, just give me a minute, one second. And walk in, yeah, agape, as Christ also has walked in this agape. And he has given himself, you know, unconditionally, sacrificially, he has given himself for us. So walk in that love. Okay, and verse 3 is a warning. But he goes on to say, you know, fornication and uncleanness, uh, covetousness, um, all these things, let it not even be named among you, which means that, you know, don't even consider it, don't even be, uh, don't uh, let it be part of your conversation. Don't even casually mention these things, you know, uh, joke about it and, and so on, so that it becomes part of your, you know, part of your speaking and thinking. Um let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. So he's saying, you know, do you, you know, when it comes to these things, a physical sin and, and, uh, you know, material sin and like, you know, covetousness and, and all kinds of um, filthiness, he's saying, um, you need to distance yourself because you're a consecrated one, right? Because uh, you're, you're living a separated life. You're living a life You're in the world at the same time, you're living a separated life. So you live in such a manner that is appropriate for you, right? that is fitting for saints. Um, and so you live in such a manner and let it not even be named, uh, named um, among you. Right? So, so that is what he said. Uh, verse four, neither filthiness, foolish talking, coarse jesting. Okay? So filthiness, uh, and foolish talking and coarse jesting, which means that, you know, some kind of joking or jokes, even, uh, you know, you be mindful of that. It might be, you know, you think that you're um, saying something funny, but the thing is, it's, um, it's, it's not really, it's, it's in bad sense. Right? It is not, it is not something that is morally good. Okay, so those kinds of jokes, right? So cause jesting. Okay, uh, so that's kind of uh, you know maybe it's uh, it's it's immoral. You know, you're, you're, um, it it could be vulgar. It could be it could be witty but vulgar, right? So this kind of uh, foolish talk, this kind of uh, foolish, uh, you know. Uh, empty jokes so let it not be part of you know it's not god is not saying you know you you make you know you 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 be happy you don't know, it's not condemning all that right but saying something that is unedifying something that is not helping okay and the, um and, and then the foolish you know talking the word used there is morologia 
you know, logia means uh, speaking and morologia, uh, which means uh, you know foolish uh, speaking or foolish talking. Right? So he's saying, let it not be part of you. Neither uh, filthiness. Uh, and which is something that's obscene, something that is shameful. You know, let it not be uh, part of your life. Okay, uh, and saying you know, which uh, which is not helping, right? Which is not helping you in any way. Which are not fitting, uh, but rather giving of thanks to God, which means we are considering certain other things apart from this, and which leads us to give thanks to Him. Okay. Verse 5, for this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, covetous man, an idol, who is an idolater. Okay, so so a covetousness leads to idolatry because you're, you know, you've created something which you're holding on to as something that is better than God, okay, something that is of highest value, and you're coveting it. You know, I want this okay, rather than God, rather than God Himself, you know, this is what you, this is what you want. This is what you need. Uh, you're saying this is what I want. You know, you're covetous, you know. So, saying, don't you know? For this, you know that none of, you know, nobody who is like this, you know, fornicator means one who is actually, you know, indulging in sexual sin before marriage, uh, and is continuing to live that way. Okay, so just this this puts that tag fornicator which means that frequent regular sinful lifestyle in this manner so saying no fornicator no covetous man and no idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of christ and god okay you cannot hope to receive something or receive an inheritance um in the kingdom of god okay so let no one deceive you with empty words let no one say anything you know, apart from the saying, oh, it's okay, you can continue to live like this. And, you know, God will, uh, you know, you can be in the kingdom of God. You know, God will accept you. you know, that is what it's coming to. You know? The world is saying, okay, this is, you can live like this. You can live a sinful life. You can live a compromising life. And God is okay with that. Well, it's not. Right? Saying, uh, let no one deceive you with these empty words. Okay, these kind of uh, words these, which lack power, words which lack truth. Uh, so let no one uh, deceive with with that. Those kind of words, um, saying uh, words which are you know, which which do not hold truth. Okay, so let no one deceive you. It's empty, right? Vain, uh, morally empty. It doesn't have truth. Doesn't have power. It's not, uh, it's not true. So let no one deceive you because of these things, the wrath of man, sorry, wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Okay. So these are inappropriate for the saints. And because one lives in that kind of a lifestyle, and, you know, we need to know that he's addressing believer the believer or the believers saying if you're going to have this as part of your lifestyle then you have no inheritance in the kingdom of christ and god okay so uh, it's a warning right uh, uh, it's a warning to be discerning it's a warning for us to take note of uh, you know maybe people who are saying it's okay to live like this it's okay to indulge it's okay to be like this um it's a warning against all that because you could lose your inheritance in the kingdom right um so as believers so what happens is that you know we know that sin deceives right sin deceives us sin takes us to a place far away from god and thinks that okay sin makes us feel that okay maybe you know, things will be fine with God. God will be okay with it. Uh, it. I'm talking about, you know, a sinful lifestyle, right? It says fornicator, unclean person, covetous person, idolater, uh, a lifestyle, right? Which is, that is the pattern. So, you know, as a believer, if we do that, do that, we know that it, sin will deceive, right? Sin deceives us. Sin brings us to a place of hardening ourselves against God. Right, which we see in Hebrews, right? We see that, well, 
do not, you know, um, I think it's Hebrews 3, which says that um, exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. So sin deceives and sin, sin also hardens our heart. Hardens our heart uh, against what? Against God, against his voice, against his instructions. So we become hardened, right? uh, not uh, sensitive, uh, not wanting to, our hearts are not tender towards God anymore, right? So that is what it means. So it could take us to a place of rejecting God, rejecting Christ, right? It's, it could take us to a place of just you know, de deceiving ourselves, saying it is fine, but we actually are you know, rejecting Christ. Okay, so is a warning, says, uh, do not do that. Um, do not be partakers with them. So the, for this very reason, it says that, you know, the wrath of God is comes is coming upon the sons of disobedience. The wrath of God comes upon the sons of uh, disobedience. Um, you know, we, we see that uh, in John chapter 3, um, um, okay, John chapter 3, verse 17, uh, verse 18, actually, right? It says, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he is not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And um, so the thing is that that condemnation is there already because they have not believed. Uh, if you look at Romans chapter 1, right? Romans chapter 1 talks about how, um, you know, the wrath of God is upon man. Uh, verse chapter 1 and verse 18 for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness okay so you know, the wrath of God the condemnation uh, resides upon those who you know who are, who are condemned who do not know him right so here he's saying you know um, do not be partakers of them do not be partakers of them. You know, don't um, uh, don't have anything to do with those kind of things. Right? Um, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Don't forget that. So don't compromise. Don't go back, and don't you know live a sinful lifestyle, because if it is so, you are going to experience the wrath of God. Okay, it's a very sober warning. Um, verse 7, do not be partakers with them. Okay, verse 8 onwards. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So uh, again, uh, again, he's addressing and he's saying, um, you know, you were once darkness. This was your this was your life. You, you know, you 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 were in your ignorance. You were in uh, in your life, which was um, totally cut away from from the light. So he's saying you were once darkness. You know, the very nature uh, that you had was uh, figuratively. When he says darkness, he's saying you were alienated from God. You did not have the light of God in you, right? So you were sinful. So your nature was unrighteousness sin so you were once darkness but now you are light in the lord okay you've come to the lord you are in the kingdom of god you are the light in the lord so walk as children of light okay walk as children of light you know um, the bible talks about how uh, in him is life and this life was a light of man, right? We we look in, uh, maybe we should just look at that verse, John chapter 1. Um, okay, let's, uh, yeah, John chapter 1, okay. Um, yeah, 
he, uh, verse 9, right? Um, that was the true light. Okay, uh, he's talking about John the witness, uh, John the Baptist. Um, so it says, um, okay, sorry. Uh, let me just back up to verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Okay, so verse 4 talks about how in him was life, um, talking about Zoe, God kind of life. And this life was the light of men. Okay, verse 9, that was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. Okay, so he's that light, and uh, it gives light to every man coming into the world. Uh, so apart from him, there is no light, meaning that uh, this life, you know, this truth, this God kind of life, uh, this very nature of God that he actually calls us to be partakers of, to commune with fellowship and receive from, um, that is the light of men. Right? All ignorance is taken away, all darkness is taken away, all the works of unrighteousness is taken away, the influence of uh, you know, darkness and unrighteousness is cut off, cut off by his light, through his light. Okay, so here is saying, you know, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Okay, you've received Christ. He is life, and his life was light. So you've received that light. You are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Now you you know, live your life as children of life. Um, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Um, so this is the outcome of the Holy Spirit's influence, Holy Spirit's work in your life, goodness, righteousness, truth. So you, you live as, um, you know, um, verse, verse 8, walk as children of light, verse 10, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. So you know, this is a process that you walk, uh, you know, not disconnected from God, but you walk in communion with God, right? Finding out. So which means there is communication, there is interaction, there is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You, we, we, I mean, it's a, it's a great invitation to fellowship with the Holy Spirit day in and day out, to be filled with the Spirit, to fellowship with the Holy, Holy Spirit, to be led by the Spirit. Right? That is our privilege as sons and daughters of God. So saying, um, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. So um, you, you're communing with God, you're walking with Him, you're interacting with Him, you find out what is acceptable to Him and do that. Right? Uh, verse 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So now the fellowship with this is with the light. The fellowship is with the Holy Spirit. It's not with the unfruitful or unproductive works of darkness um, the works of darkness though it might seem pleasurable it might seem uh, it might seem fancy it might seem very spectacular uh, at times it is unproductive and unfruitful it right? does not produce the righteousness of god because it has no life right it is uh, you know it might be you know it might stir up the flesh it might you know uh, do all that but it is unproductive Right. So it says it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, right? even to mention it. Um, and so it says, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the lights. Whatever makes manifest is light. So this, this is the quality of truth. This is the quality of uh, the life of God, which is called the light of the world. Right. This is the quality, this is the nature that it exposes the, the light. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it puts on display, the light puts on display and exposes and uh, it makes manifest uh, the, the quality of God. It, uh, it's, that's the quality of, uh, that, that's the nature of God, right? Uh, verse 14, awake, awake you, O sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Okay. So, um, the last few instructions, um, lead, then, then he goes on to talk about uh, husband and wife and so on, right? This is in verse 15, see that you walk circumspectly. Okay. 
not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil therefore do not be unwise but understand what of the will what the will of the lord is and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all things to god the father in the name of the lord jesus christ okay uh, submitting to one another in the fear of god okay so saying you walk circumspectly okay so which means that you be aware of how where and where you're putting your feet right that means walking circumspectly so um um not as fools but as wise so which means there's a difference between how the wise people walk and how the foolish walk so you live in that manner which means you know uh, circumspectly meaning accurately diligently right so you be sure of how you are of the decisions that you are making um live in such a way that is it, it's accurate it's diligent right um so you live in such a manner um don't live in a foolish way but live as the wise would do um why the reason being you know um because if you're not walking circumspectly then there is a waste of time right um because if if you're not uh, putting in effort to okay maybe even plan things uh, with god you know asking him and then and then obeying him um then we are walking circumspectly but if we are rushing into things uh, doing things uh, without consulting god and uh, and doing some foolish things and indulging in foolish things then there is a waste of time right so he's saying you know walk in the manner in which the wise people would walk redeeming the time okay it's like it's like even it's like taking back time you know, redeeming the time um you know that's something which uh, so time has this quality you know of just passing on moving forward you cannot go back in time right today to, today i think is a, a quite an interesting date right 2202 and 2022 we yeah you notice that no i just put it in the chat so if you if you if you read it uh, you know from the right to left also is the same right it's a palindrome that's what they call it no front to, uh, from left to right it's the same from right to left it's the same right uh, today's date so so the thing is like you know 2022 is not going to come back again it just moves forward um but we can live in a manner if we are living accurately if we are living circumspectly uh we can live as people who redeem the time you know that then you have um you're not wasting time you have time to uh, time to do certain things which are productive which are on target Right? you're not wasting it so it says uh, redeeming the time because the days are evil okay? therefore do not be unwise unwise but understand what the will of the lord is of because of all these things because the days are evil you know live and live walk circumspectly uh, not foolishly um, therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the lord is now we know that god wants to make his will known to us he's not holding back he's god who's uh, who wants to reveal these things to us so understand what the will of the lord is okay so we will um, we'll stop here where this is uh, verse 17 and then we'll continue um, next class next class we will finish with ephesians hopefully um, and also start off with uh, galatians right we will we'll just move a little quicker uh from now on okay all right thank you you guys have a great day god bless bye bye